Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Wood Shop. Howdy! Boy, it's good to be back in the shop. A little while ago, Joel Hansel from Georgia sent me this white oak burl, and I've been kind of studying on it for a couple of weeks, deciding how to turn it, which way to turn it. Is that the top? Well, wait till you see the other side. It's just, it's just hard for me to decide. And I hope you guys will chip in with your opinions. Let me know what you think, this way or the other way. Oh, you can't see the other way? Well, let me show it to you. The piece is about 9 by 12 by about 4 and a half inches tall at that point. Tapers down to nothing at this end. I always default to bark side up. I like the contrast of bark against the turned wood. And speaking of wood, look at that. Oh my gosh. That's beautiful. Just beautiful. But like I said, I default to this side. So I took it out of the box like this. It looked like this. And then once I flipped it over, I thought, oh my gosh, I have to turn that to the top side. But then you get to looking at it, the shape. And so the bowl would be over here and the rest would be a wing. And that's okay. I mean, I've, I've done that. I like that. It's a good look. The problem I'm afraid I might run into is hollowing this side out. And then the weight of this side is going to make it sit. Well, won't sit. That's what I'm afraid of. To avoid all of that, I thought I'd come over here. Instead of starting right at the top, I'd come way over here to make the bowl. Something along those lines. Now that feature right there, I just love that. It kind of looks like a cave. And if it was turned this way, you'd see it, but you'd have to look for it. You'd have to tip the bowl up and look at it. This way, you'll see it all the time. So, it's a dilemma for me. It's just a dilemma. I. I I still haven't decided. And like I say, I've been looking at it a couple of weeks and I came out here with this in mind, but then I looked at that again and oh my gosh, and I, and I, <laughs> I don't know what to do. What am I gonna do? What's your choice? You want this side up? You want this side up? Now this way, the, to me this is a bonus. Let's say we cut a, cut a bowl in here. Now if I made a small bowl, we could make this look like a volcano that erupted and all this bark is the lava flowing down. I love that idea, but that's a small hole up here, way up here, it's not practical. You wouldn't get to see a lot of that. So, I don't know, I don't know. I think I'm going this way. We're still gonna see, we're still gonna see that beautiful wood inside the bowl. It's not gonna be a small hole like a volcano. It's gonna be a big off center off of this center. It's going to be down this way. And I, I think that'll work. I think it'll look the best. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mess around here a little bit. I've been messing around with these dividers or this compass deciding where that center of the bowl should be without running off the edge over here or running off over here. So it's probably something along those lines. So I'm going to go drill a flat spot for my chuck jaws to set against, drill a hole in the middle of that for my woodworm screw, get this mounted up, and we'll get to turning this white oak burl from Joel Hansel in Georgia. Thanks, Joel. First thing I need to do is true up this bottom. And wouldn't you know, this is the furthest away here. And where my little cave is, is the closest. So I'm going to end up cutting away the bottom of that cave. Dang it. It'll still be there, but the bottom will be gone. Mostly gone, I guess. But that's the way it goes, always, seems like. We're going to be turning at 500 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask, and face shield on. I'm just seeing if it's an equal distance all the way around, and it seemed it to be. And there's our cave, and the bottom is gone, dang it. I haven't touched everywhere yet. I think close enough, so we'll make a base for it to sit on, and then a tenon. I'm 
mark out for the tenon. better see where that base is sitting looks pretty good we're just about there now I'm going to use this diamond point tool to square up the sides of the tenon stand to be sharpened but that'll work time for sanding I'm gonna start the sanding with my sando flex I'm gonna sand the bark uh, probably just up a couple of inches some of it will be turned away but I, I like to get it so that after I've applied my finish down here I don't want to mess it up by sanding it then and when that's done I'll switch to the two inch disc but I'll show you what this looks like first as soon as I get my mask on And that's just a sample. I'll be doing a lot more of that. And once that's finished, I'll turn to my two inch disc starting at 80 grit and working up through 400. I'll have the lathe spinning in reverse at about 325. And that looks like that'll be pretty easy peasy. I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. I'm curious how this is going to finish up. This heartwood is real hard, real smooth. And the sapwood, the lighter color, is, uh, I don't want to say punky. It doesn't act punky. It looks punky. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. We're going to find out. Joel showed me a picture of a piece he did. And it was absolutely gorgeous. Oh, well, this is a sanding sealer, shellac based sanding sealer. It's called Zinzer Seal Coat. Well, it appears to be finishing up okay. It does have a slight texture to it, like punky wood does, but not nearly as bad. Maybe, be, maybe it's like that because it's a burl, I don't know. But it is sure pretty. Might see some creatures in there, I don't know. I see a couple of bear paws there, or bear prints. I need to brush into this inclusion here, so I'm just going to, I don't have much brushing to do, so I'm just going to put a little on the brush. Okay, that's the first of two coats of sanding sealer, and then I'll put on two coats of shellac, and I'll bring you back here in a bit, and we will start working on the inside. See you in a bit. I've turned the piece around with the tenon mounted up in the chuck. Uh, when I was drilling my flat spot for my chuck jaws and then I had to drill a clearance hole because this was so much taller it was hitting the chuck body I lost a piece of bark but I found it so that'll fit right back in there like that so that'll fit back in there I just don't I'm not gonna glue it in now because I don't know how much of that I'm gonna be turning away we're gonna be turning at 500 rpm 5 8 inch bowl gouge mask and face shield on I can't really see the edge of that hole, so I'm going to start inside of it a little bit, somewhere, somewhere, oh, somewhere in there.
Okay, well, we can go further out than that, so I'm going to start back in here somewhere. Dang it, lots of more bark. Same spot. Okay, well, now I got another piece of bark. I don't need to come much farther than that anyway, probably. I just can't tell until I get down in there a little further. I need to get this to be a little cleaner cut over here. I'm just going to try and shear scrape that, I guess. I wish I could see it. Okay, now that's good. This is some strange wood. Cutting along here is real nice, but once I get into this center section, that, that wood is just so much softer. I guess it is punky. I wouldn't have thought that. Right here where this is, that goes all the way to the bottom, and on the bottom it comes up inside there a little bit, so I'd really rather not have a hole in the bottom, but, you know, we got to do what we got to do. I can't stop now. i got a hole, almost an inch to go. I'm gonna go sharpen up. Well, I've just measured the bottom again, and it's about three quarters of an inch now. So I guess it was an inch earlier. I got one leg of this up into the bottom side of this right here, and when I do that, then I have a, about a half, well, not even a half an inch, about three eighths of an inch. Over here would probably be a little less because that goes in there. So that means I can only go about a quarter inch deeper, or I'm gonna have this is going to be a hole in the bottom. And I don't know how far that leg could come up in there. I, I was only able to get it partially up in there, so it, I think it could probably come up a little further, but it won't fit. If that makes sense. Okay, I'm all sharp. I wonder if I can pick the speed up any. Yeah, almost about 580. That'll help. And a sharp gouge will help. Let's get back at it. See, that's getting deeper. This, what I'm trying to do is uh, on, on the bottom side, see this is heartwood, the, the redder color, and we're just starting to get into it. And on the bottom side over here, 
is heartwood. So I'd like to go just a little bit further and get a little more of that showing. I'm just scared. I'm going up inside that bark inclusion and I'm about three sixteenths of an inch. Well, I'm not even I'm not even inside of the upper part, just the bottom part. So we're, we're just about there. I just can't do much more. Oh, we're gonna have a hole. I'm going to try my scraper, see if I can clean this up a little bit. Okay, that's about as much as we can get out of it. I'm gonna glue that piece of bark back in there. I think I only need the one piece now. Yeah, so I'll glue that back in there, cut it off, sand it up a little bit. Time for sanding. I'm gonna be sanding with my two inch sanding disc starting at 80 grit. The lathe is gonna be spinning forward at about 340 RPM. And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. Oh, and I did fix that bark problem right here. So that's good to go. It looks like that's going to be pretty easy. I'll bring you back here in just a little bit. We'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well, I want you to see something in this before I put the uh, sanding sealer on, just in case he fades away. You see anybody there you recognize? Right here. Homer Simpson. Here's his hair, his two eyes, his nose. And if you want to include it, he's wearing a jacket and a shirt. Here's his shoulder over here, another shoulder over here, this shirt, arm coming out, Homer Simpson, right? You see him? I see him plain as day. I hope he doesn't fade away when I apply the sanding sealer. Nope. There he is, in all his glory. I also, when I was sanding, I also used my Sandoflex. I didn't think to show it to you. You saw me use it on the uh, bottom side. Pretty much the same thing. Homer Simpson. I used the Sandoflex just on the bark. I did some of the bark from the bottom side, but I couldn't get it all. And I'm going back over what I already did because, uh, because of the Sandoflex. Well, I'm very happy with this piece. So this is the first of two coats of shellac based sanding sealer and then I'll apply two coats of shellac and you can I can see light through this hole so I stopped at the right point. So I'll get these two coats on and uh, the shellac on in here and I'll bring it back and we'll take the tenon off and I don't expect any issues from that. Famous last words. So I'll see you in a bit. I've mounted a block of wood up in my chuck. I'm going to place a non-slip cloth over that and place the bowl over that and bring up my tailstock. I still have that center hole there for reference so I can just drive my live center into that. Apply a little pressure. Bring up my tool rest. We'll spin the piece up see if it's running true. I'll just hold my thumbnail against the edge of the tenon. Well there's a little notch out of there that makes it feel like it's not even but it looks like it is. Yeah, it's good. Turn the speed up to about 600 RPM. I'm going to grab a 3 8 inch bowl gouge and commence to removing that tenon.
Now I just want to check for clearance. And we have good clearance. There's a few cracks in that, giving me a hard time cutting it smoothly. And I'm a little worried that it might come apart when I'd rather it didn't. So I'm going to turn the speed down here a little bit, about 400 RPM. Just keep working it away. Now that's pretty small, so I want to switch to a swept back bowl gouge. And I also want to adjust my tool rest a little bit closer and a little bit higher so I've got good support. And now that's quite small, so I'm going to turn the speed down to about 200 RPM. And I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch, pressure towards the headstock. And when that little nub stops turning, we'll know we're through. Like that. Now I'll just take this over here to the workbench, sand that up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, here it is. One white oak burl, live edge bowl in the books. Isn't that beautiful? What about Homer Simpson there? Come on, you know that's Homer. He, he might be an evil Homer, but he's a Homer. Homer Homer Simpson right there, plain as day. I just love this part here. That's wonderful. There's the bottom all finished up. Beautiful on the bottom as well. I don't know if I see any critters in there, do you? Like I said, a couple of bear paws, bear prints. I just, I just love this piece, it's real nice. Got a great finish on it. And Homer. Thank you Joel Hansel from Georgia for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up please, I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.